Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest. I am out in my new forested area near my home, an area called Lake Stickney. And although there is a lake, I actually can't get to it. It mostly has houses with private access. I did drive around to the boat launch and fishing area, but it wasn't quite what I had hoped. Just a lot of really big houses around the lake. So I decided to come back into the public access area of the park, which is quite busy with people and dogs, but also has so many of the same flora that I've been used to in my Tambark Park in my last home. So I thought it might be fun to kind of walk around a little bit, take a peek at some of the common dye materials that I find locally and some that are just springing up in this late spring and maybe take a sample of something or two to bring back to have my first dye session in my new studio. Let's go poke around Stickney Park. So as you might imagine, I live in an area where there are a ton of evergreen trees. And evergreens provide all kinds of natural color. You've seen me look at various forms here on Color Quest, and basically, if you just keep your eyes open, you can look to things like bark and cones, as well as downed branches. And if you look around the bases, you may even find lichen that has blown away from the trees. So always keeping an open eye and maybe just quietly sitting and looking around, you will find what an evergreen is willing to provide. And it's definitely worth testing. They will give different shades depending upon what kind of tree they are and what part of the tree you choose to use. So I see a lot of spruce cones around this area. I don't see any pine near me. I would look out for those. I do know how to identify the main difference between pine and spruce. Cones definitely look different. But if I look around, all the cones I see around me are definitely of the spruce variety. There really are so many cones here. And they're all this spruce shape cone, which are longer and thinner. They have a very different look to the pine cones that I've foraged for in Idaho. And again, I don't see any around here. I just can see spruce cones, various forms everywhere along here. I just walk my way up here. Just tons and tons of spruce cone. Beautiful. I have a few videos here where I looked at needles and the branches of evergreen. And Noble Fir was one of them, made a beautiful color. I actually used that as an exhaust bath last week when I had shifted it with iron. Super pretty. And we may have some fir in this forest. Again, not sure, but I have seen some downed branches with the pine needles or the needles. And needles can make a really wonderful dye source. So really get creative about thinking about the whole tree and what you can use from that tree. Here are some downed branches with the needles. This branch would be a good one to take. The needles themselves would be a great addition to a dye pot and the bark and branch too. Right next to this you can see is a very prickly bush and as you may know about the Pacific Northwest we have a ton of wild berries. Now we have salmonberry and blackberry as well as raspberries and 
one thing I'm definitely going to try soon is the bramble itself. So although you can make dye with the fruits, the bramble make a beautiful neutral dye and are a hidden source of color. Now in Tambark Park, I have a lot of alder. So far I haven't seen alder, but alder bark branches and little tiny cones also make some really pretty colors. So I'm gonna keep my eye out as I walk through and see if I can see some alder, maybe birch. Not entirely convinced of that. It's gonna take me a while to identify some of these things, but I will definitely be looking for those. The catkins of alder also produce color, and I've looked at some of those colors before here. Now it is springtime here, it's late May, so there's a whole series of flowers that are scattered amongst the forest, and I have this great app called Picture This. It isn't always accurate, but you can take a picture and it'll give you a guess at what kind of plant it is and it's been helping me to identify certain kinds of plants and trees and there's this beautiful pink flower here that I just tried it on so I'm going to show you that as well and I'm kind of curious what it came up with as a response because it's possible that this could also be a dyed plant. Let's check it out. According to picture this, this is a geranium. Now I know geranium makes dye, so I may come back here and sample some of these leaves and stems. Don't know if the flowers will do anything. They sure are pretty though. And they look gorgeous out here with the green of the forest. Lots of planes flying over here. <laughs> so close to that field. So here is a downed stick and it has lichen on it. Now, I just used my picture, this app, to identify it, and I'm gonna take this back home and look at my lichen book to see if maybe this lichen will provide some color. I could, in fact, take this stick home with me. I won't this time, but since it's downed, it would be an ethical way to collect some of it. Now, I'm also noticing here that we have salmonberry. This is really common. They have these beautiful pink flowers and you can already see some of its fruit starting to grow. I'm sure that salmonberry bramble also will make a color. So I will definitely be coming back to do a bramble video at some point very soon. I think I may have found maybe some birch huge trees absolutely huge but i see that they have a split trunk i don't think i can get to them the underbrush here is quite thick but i will turn you around and if in fact that is a trunk there then it's a very good chance that's birch don't know if i could get there but that's some old birch maybe there would be some downed bark in the area here we go, here's some downed bark. An actual whole big piece of branch. It's got some lichen on it as well, different kinds. And the bark, if it is in fact birch, is gonna be something I could definitely use. This is a pretty big branch. I'll probably keep looking around at a future date for some bark. Okay, so this is a fun find. I saw this from a distance and I'm like, I think that's lilac. And sure enough, that's exactly what it is. I'm gonna go back and do a little research and see if lilac flowers will produce a color. And if so, I'm gonna come back and harvest some of these. I saw it from a distance over there and I'm like, hmm, what else would that be? All right, may have some video content for you next week. Lilac plucked right from the forest near my house. Ah uh, yes, the very end of season four, the dandelion. Never realized they were spring. Make a wish. I'm getting a bit closer to the road. I'm sure you can hear the traffic, but I did notice this really nice piece here of oak moss. Still attached to a stick, but I'll take that with me now. It's easy to put in my pocket. 
really nice lichen dye from oak moss. I just found this on the ground. This is pine, and I looked up. Sure enough, that is pine, but I don't think it's still producing cones. I don't see any pine-like cones, so I think these must be from the other tree. I don't know. I don't think that's a pine cone. These all have that spruce shape, so they only have those way up there you can see the pine needles but right next to it is a holly tree it's a lot of holly here I really don't know if holly itself makes a color kind of curious might have to come out sample some do a little research on that if you know let me know could be interesting. Maybe I could find some green. Ha, huh, that'd be too easy. Oh my gosh, look what I just found. Just by looking around, here's a pine cone. There you go, pine cone, spruce cone. So, this guy is from the tree that's here. He's hanging out with his spruce friends. Cause there's spruce everywhere here. But look, just keep your eyes open. You never know what you're gonna find. That is like the fifth plane that has flown over since I've been here. <laughs> Maybe I need to get my pilot's license. Now one prominent plant that you will see all over the wet forests of Washington on the western side is the fern. And fern also makes a color. So I think today, after I've done some exploring, I'm going to sample, harvest a little bit of this fern here, and that will be what we'll make in the dye pot today as a first round of dye in my new kitchen studio. So why don't we harvest some and then head back to the studio and get cooking on that electric stove of mine. <laughs> So I have the fern now on a very low temperature. I got up to just below a boil and then turned it down. I'm gonna let this sit and stew for like two hours. And then I'm just gonna let this dye pot cool and I will probably allow this fern to sit overnight in the dye pot. And I might even heat it a second time tomorrow. These kinds of more fibrous materials can take longer for the color to emerge. So either soaking them prior to heating them, you know, like overnight you can soak them prior, and certainly letting them cool in the dye pot and sit for longer periods of time in water will just give more opportunity for color to emerge. So I'm using my electric stove for the first time and I am doing several different pots today. And something that may be a benefit, I don't know, in terms of controlling heat is that I have a large burner, small burner option for each one of the plates. And so I'm gonna try for dyes that I want to have on a lower temperature to maybe be using the small plate option, which won't heat quite out to the edges of the pot. Maybe that's a way to control the heat better. Again, if you are using electric heat and you have any suggestions, feel free to share them with me. 
this is really experimental for me. I don't know, it makes sense that I, having those two options, I might be actually able to have a, a wide range of heat. So I don't wanna discount this electric heat quite yet. Thank you, Fern, for that lovely, subtle, neutral palette. So many colors in nature bring about those more neutral and soft tones. And we are used to the world of bright and vibrant colors. I think sometimes overlook how beautiful really soft colors can be. The one point that I do want to bring up is the use of protein fibers like silk. As usual, the silk came in quite a few shades darker. If you are looking for darker colors, you will typically get a darker shade using a protein fiber like silk or wool. I'm hoping to incorporate more wool options later in the year, bring in some yarn i haven't done yarn yet i really need to do that don't i i don't knit so it's usually last on my mind but it can be a really fantastic way to have naturally dyed fibers for knitting projects so the other piece i thought was kind of interesting was that the cotton did better or at least held a little bit more color with the soy milk binder as opposed to the alum which is also not typically the case. I do believe, however, that I used a straight aluminum potassium sulfate on that cotton, and that's not really what's recommended. It would be better served as aluminum acetate for cotton. But anyway, got some nice colors there. And how easy was that, and how abundant is fern in this area, anyway? Next week on Color Quest, I I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to sample some of that lilac. I am just so curious to see what colors it may bring to my dye pot. And I'm thinking we could get some variety out there. So have a wonderful week. I will see you next Friday and hope you will join me on another foraging trip to select lilac from the Lake Stickney Park. You're my home in the Pacific Northwest.